Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Thank you. Jesus said to his disciples, There is no need to be afraid, little flock, for it has pleased your Father to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Get yourselves purses that do not wear out, treasure that will not fail you. In heaven, where no thief can reach it and no moth destroy it. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See that you are dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like men waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at table, and wait on them. It may be in the second watch he comes, or in the third, but happy those servants if he finds them ready. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the wall of his house. You too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, do you mean this parable for us or for everyone? The Lord replied, What sort of steward then is faithful and wise enough for the master to place him over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Happy that servant, if his master's arrival finds him at this employment. I tell you truly, he will place him over everything he owns. But as for the servant who says to himself, My master is taking his time coming, and sets about beating the men servants and the maids, and eating and drinking and getting drunk. His master will come on a day he does not expect and at an hour he does not know. The master will cut him off and send him to the same fate as the unfaithful. The servant who knows what his master wants but has not even started to carry out this wish with his wishes will receive very many strokes of the lash. The one who did not know, but deserves to be beaten for what he has done, will receive fewer strokes. When a man has had a great deal given him, a great deal will be demanded of him. When a man has had a great deal given him on trust, even more will be expected of him. The Gospel of the Lord. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In the Brigittine convent in Rome, a 30-second walk from the English College Seminary, raised up high on either side of the altar are two stained glass windows. One depicts the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the other the Immaculate Heart 
of Mary. They are united in mission. Tomorrow is Divine Mercy Sunday. The image of the Divine Mercy depicts the sacred spiritual water and sacred spiritual blood flowing from the sacred heart of Jesus. The water and blood which flowed from his sacred heart upon the cross are definitive gifts from God the Father. They offer us the atoning blood of his sacrifice which we consume in the Eucharist and the purifying holy water which washes away sin and recreates us as sons and daughters of the Lord which we receive in baptism. By the divine mercy, heaven is opened for us. The Lord Jesus has done all things well, as St. Mark's Gospel tells us. He is the complete living goal of all our lives this day and for all eternity. He feeds us with his heavenly body, blood, soul and divinity, and with his inspired word, the Holy Bible, which his church, his body, has been interpreting truthfully for centuries, truly teaching us to keep focused on heaven. The Gospel today from St. Luke witnesses to the Lord Jesus' divine and final authority. Jesus in the Gospel speaks of the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Central to the message of Fatima is Our Lady's call for all peoples to repent of their sins, to see their lives within the context of eternity, within the context of judgment, heaven and hell. Jesus is the life from heaven. But are we learning to be ever more open to his sacred heart and his mother's immaculate heart? Do we place the indescribable privilege of heaven as the foundational goal of our every choice? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Gospel parable comes from a selection of teachings which focus on our death, and judgment by the Lord. We have the man who stores up grain and wealth at the expense of his immortal soul. Next, Jesus warns us about becoming overly attached to our lives, our bodies, food, clothing. What matters first? is the soul and whether we are awake, whether we are ready to meet Jesus. What matters is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus in our gospel lists four outcomes for the soul that is facing the eternal judgment of the Lord. The first is the glory 
of heaven. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at table, and wait on them. How beautifully this reminds us of Maundy Thursday, when Jesus puts on an apron and washes the feet of his disciples, ordaining them into his eternal priesthood of loving sacrifice, the way to heaven. The second judgment refers to those servants who, in full knowledge, act cruelly toward their fellow servants, male and female, and behave in unrepentant and unvirtuous ways, reveling in their debauchery. Theirs is the final destination of the unfaithful, hell. The other two destinations following judgment are not permanent, but where the servants receive correction, punishment, and purification. The first servant knows the will of the master, but has delayed its implementation, whilst the other does not know the Lord's will, but has still acted sinfully. This non-permanent place of correction we see taught in the Lord's church as purgatory. We must do all we can to stand ready, to be docile to his spirit, the sweet touch of Jesus led by his mother. We must be awake for the coming of Jesus. For the love of the Lord is our true, bless you, are you all right? Do you need a glass of water? You okay? It's all right, you okay? The love of the Lord is our true and stupendous joy. We must live our lives as if Jesus is our living treasure. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus has bestowed upon his mother the fullest gifts that any human can ever receive. Such is her holiness, such is her sinless radiance that she can with her son's eternal pleasure, even command the sun to dance, as happened at Fatima on October the 13th, 1917. In the reading from the Apocalypse, we read the description of a woman whose beauty is so honored by creation, by the sun, by the moon, by stars. And this holy woman suffers as she brings the Son of God into the world. You see, she is an integral and essential part of the saving, suffering mission of Jesus for each of us. And as the Son is taken into glory to reign forever, his mother is sent to earth, to this desert, to help us turn towards Jesus. For the apparitions of Our Lady continue to help her children approach the grace of her Son as if for the first time. For Jesus is always new, always more than we can ever imagine. She teaches us to see the gift of our lives as an opportunity to live 
for heaven. To remember that judgment is as inevitable as death. In her revelations to the three children of Fatima, Mary reveals a hint of the eternal splendor of heaven in the miraculous dancing of the sun. But she also reveals to the children the horror of hell. The now venerable sister Lucia has said of this vision that that vision only lasted for a moment thanks to our good heavenly mother who at the first apparition had promised to take us to heaven. Without that, I think that we would have died of terror and fear. Death, judgment, heaven and hell are truly the four last things. May an understanding of them help us to see how much we long for and need the mercy of Jesus at all times. Tomorrow we will celebrate the divine mercy, the open and flowing sacred heart of Jesus offered to all. But today, the first Saturday of the month, we will make communions of reparation for the sins of the world with the Immaculate. Today we honour the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary, a heart which is depicted with a sword, for she invites us to pray for, to suffer for, to do penance for all those who offend the risen Lord. She, as our mother, comes to lead us all to the truth, Jesus, with such tenderness and heavenly beauty. And with this beauty growing in us, she longs for us to join her on this sacred mission. Will we put this sacred mission of heaven first? For that is where our treasure must be. By the prayers of Mary's Immaculate Heart, Our Lady of the Rosary, Our Lady of Fatima, may we live our lives truly within the beckoning, glorious judgment of our Lord, who thirsts to admit all into the mansions of heaven who thirsts to embrace all who will accept his forgiveness for their sins. As Jesus has risen triumphant, so the Immaculate Heart of Mary is also triumphant in bringing all those who yearn for truth, for Jesus, into the glories of heaven. May the sun, which never sets Christ, the morning star, ever reveal the beauty of Mary, for she is the most beautiful creation of all heaven and earth. She is our Immaculate Mother.